Welcome back. Welcome back to another B Line to Passports. My name is Joe Batista. I'm your host. And tonight we have a special guest. This special guest, he is an actor and a model. His name is Axel Aponte. Axel, welcome to B Line to Passports. Thank you. Such an honor to be here. Thank you for accepting the invitation. And like we ask every week, how everything started. We want to know uh, about your childhood, your education, where you're from. Um, we want to know also uh, when you start your, your career, all this great stuff, because I always said we're nosy. We want to know <laughs> information about our guests. So I'm originally from San Juan, Puerto Rico. So I was born there. Um, I was raised in Bayamon, just 30 minutes away from San Juan. You be careful because San Juan and Bayamon, yeah. you know, always they have some, <laughs> something, something there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So um, at the age of seven, I moved to um, Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. Um, when I was young, I grew up with a um, single mom. Okay. Uh, dad left when I was four. Um, unfortunate, but, you know, it's fine. Um, so... When I was seven, um, my mom decided to move to the States. Um, she, she was pregnant with my sister. Okay. So I decided to move over here. Um, no, another reason was because I did not know how to um, read or write Spanish. Okay. So when I was living in PR, I knew how to speak it, but I didn't know how to read or write it. Okay. So okay. Um, they um, advised my mom, the uh, teachers, to um, move to the States. So All right. um, we moved to Boston, and then we were there for a couple months, and then uh, we decided to move here in Florida. And uh, as of this month, we've been living here for 20 years. Wow. So, <laughs> here in our in, in, in Orlando. Wow. Um, so been living here for 20 years. It's been great. Um, <laughs> so, right? Very yeah, that's, good. that's a little bit of, you know, how, you know, we, we um, came to Florida. Um, when I was a little bit older, I took um, therapy and um, speech classes. Because mm -hmm. I, I, you know, when you're when when I when I came here, I only spoke Spanish. Okay. So I I learned how to speak English, and I took speech classes and therapy for like writing and just uh, had somewhat of a of a speech impediment a little bit. Okay. Um. So did that improved? Uh. Went to middle school and high school. Um. I did baseball in middle school through high school. Uh. Didn't make it because of my size, but <laughs> <laughs> happens. Um. And I did cross country. So I did cross country for a couple years in high school uh when i graduated i went to uh, valencia first like almost every central florida person that doesn't have that much money to go to one of these big colleges okay so i went to valencia for a couple years um i tried my hand in accounting uh didn't do so well basically you see the numbers and the and you run when you saw the numbers <laughs> no no it wasn't that it was more so because like so i was I was taught on how to handle money. Okay. So yes. I know how to handle money. It was yes. just the concept of it. I just could not understand. And let me tell you, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, when you, you know, being, uh, you know, I have my master's and I remember one of the classes that I took uh, when the MBA, uh, you need to take, you know, accounting classes. Man, I hate that classes. Yeah. I, I, every time, like, why that formula is not yeah. working <laughs> it's so, yeah. because you have this wrong bad yeah bad bad okay so um it, it wasn't working out too well so um when i transferred ucf i changed my major to um integrated business okay so it's a business degree that i learned a little bit of everything so i learned a little bit of marketing finance um sales awesome um and somewhat of accounting not too much of accounting but somewhat a little bit of that and um when I graduated, literally right after I graduated, um, I was signing up for internships. So okay. I signed up for an internship, and um, there was a lady that um, she wanted me to join her podcast. So nice. I was part of her podcast for um, a couple months, a good three months. And then um, while I, I was part of the podcast, I met people that were like in business and stuff like that, were CEOs, owners. And then um, during that time, I got a job at... Um, at um universal studios for okay. the um, camera people called uh color vision okay so um i did that for a bit then i got kind of tired of it and um then i left uh did a uh, package handling for a bit they didn't like that and now i'm currently at spirit airlines 
So oh, all right. For a year and nine months now. So nice. Great. Yeah. What do you do at Spirit? I'm a service agent. Service so, agent. I'm a service agent. I, um, I'm usually at the counter or at customs where immigration is at. Okay. Where okay. people land and um, I just escort them down and they go through uh, CBP, which yes, is a, the a customs custom and, security, uh, and border patrol. Border yes. patrol security. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, I don't deal with a whole lot of people, so, <laughs> which is a good thing because sometimes it, at the airport does get crazy. Yes. Yes. So, um, yeah, that's that's um, what I do in, in my personal life. Um, and, um, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Um, and question about being in the entertainment industry. Uh, when or you have somebody in your family involved in the in, in entertainment industry? Um, I do, but that's not the reason how I got here. Okay. So okay. Uh, there was a family member of mine. Uh, she was an actress. So um, she was part of the union. All right. Um, she's no longer doing acting no more. Okay. Uh, sadly, because it's just, I don't know what probably she probably lost or just like, you know, the, the doesn't have the, the heart for it because you know, it is it is hard in the industry. Yes. But um, when I saw what she was doing, I was like, oh, I want to like get into that and stuff mm -hmm. like that so um when i was in college um i wanted to do film but uh, my family was like look how are you gonna do it when you know it's it's florida it's not la exactly, so i was exactly. like okay yeah. well then that's what i did accounting I was like, let me do accounting but while i was in college i wanted to network with the people in the industry so um uh there was someone that i met in college i was part of a christian group Okay. And um, he was an actor. And then uh, we both went to Faith Assembly. Mm -hmm. And Faith Assembly had this group of uh, people that, that that wanted to do films. Correct. JC so, Films? Uh, I don't know what the, okay. I forgot what it was. Okay. It was, it was a couple years ago. So I All right. I don't know what it was. But um, it was um, just a little film group that I was a part of. And at that time, um, I was learning how to write. So I took an elective of like writing classes. Okay. So I, I took um, screenwriting for a bit. Awesome. So as I was doing screenwriting, I was, you know, learning how to do that, learning how to write scripts. Um, I've written a couple of features that I just haven't like been able to just let people see. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, so, um, but when I, when I was part of this group, I, I was the writer mm -hmm. for a couple of the projects. Um, and then, um, and one of the projects that the, the very first project we did was a short film that um, they didn't have a villain. All right. So they didn't have a villain and they were looking for a villain and I volunteered to play that part. It's like, hey, I have this jacket that if I wear, I'm going to look creepy in it. Mm -hmm. So I wore the jacket and the directors are, all right, you're in. So that's how I got the part. And um, it was for a project for UCF. Okay. And um, he submitted it in the UCF copy competition so um i did the part and um it was fun acting in it never took a, at that time i didn't take any acting classes whatsoever i just went with the flow um i was okay how can i portray this character and then i would have conversations with um the actress um because there's a scene in the film where i i am choke her out okay so um i wanted to know she was very comfortable with it if i actually grab her by the throat and <laughs> not really choke her but just grab her tightly and she was like yeah i'm okay with it so um and it was the first time i've ever acted um and then um right after that s there was some stuff that were going fishy with the with the group mm -hmm. so i kind of like backed away from it I was like you know i'm not gonna be with this person no more because um uh, this particular person was all talk, no show. Okay. So okay, got it. Um, got it. there was just certain things. I was like, you know what? I don't feel comfortable working with this person. Um, so then I left. Um, and then one of the actors that was in one of our projects, um, he want, he got invited to this event in um, Fashion Square Mall. There was a student that was there. Okay. I don't think it's still there no more. But um, he got invited and it was a free event. So I was like, oh, let, let me go. So I went and I usually like to go to events early mm -hmm. just so that I could just meet people and just check it out. Uh, network. Network and stuff like that. So I got there early and I get into the elevator and there was this particular guy that walked in and he was like, oh, are you are you here for the event? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm here for the event. He was like, oh, okay, well, my name is blah, blah, blah. This, this is my uh, um, dad's studio. Oh, so wow. like, oh, oh, 
okay, cool. So then Very I, nice. you know, we go up, we started having a conversation. Um, he, we um, looked around the studio. I met his dad. Um, and his dad was really cool. So then um, with his son, the son was like, hey, um, I I have these showcases where like artists come in and they rap. Um, do you want to like participate? I was like, well, I'm not a rapper, but I could help you out with like photography or videography, whatever you need. He's like, okay. So he had a couple of shows. Um, and at that time, um, I was helping him out with the recordings of the camera and, and photos and then sending it to him. And then COVID happened. So COVID happened and, um, you know, everything went, I don't know what happened. I still reach out to him just to see, to see how he's doing. Hasn't done anything since, but, um, he, I'm kind of, you know, helped me out through that a little bit. And then, um, he wanted me to write, write a script for him. Okay. So, um, he said, Hey, how, how, how about you, um, come to my dad's studio and we'll, we'll, we'll um, talk about the script. Okay. So I wrote the script. And then I'm on my way to his dad's studio and he sends me a, uh, he, no, no, he doesn't send me. He calls me. He calls me. He's like, hey, scratch the studio. My dad has an event at the lounge. Okay. Um, come by. And I was like, do I got to pay? He's like, no, just say that you're with me. You're going to get in. <laughs> All right. So I go at the at, at the front of the uh, entrance. I see the security. Security is like, oh, what are you doing here? And I'm like, oh, I'm with that guy. So, <laughs> so I point him out and he's like, okay, you're good. So he lets me in. And then um, we start talking about the project. So he started talking about the project. His dad comes up with the mic. He's like, "Hey, buddy, uh, what are you um, here for?" Like, "Oh, I'm here to uh, I'm here for people that are part of film and stuff like that." I was like, "Oh, I know some people. I'm gonna introduce them." All right. And that's how I met Lenny and Zia. There on you that go. Day. <laughs> so that's how I met Lenny and Zia for um, OIF, and then um, I got connected with them. Um, I I wrote a script. Um, and one of the challenges a couple of years ago um, got accepted, and I didn't know until Zia messaged me, "Hey, did, did you find out that your script got accepted?" I was like, "Oh, I didn't know." Wow! So um, very nice. I was trying to figure out because I've never done it. My I, I've done my own projects, but it was all improv. It was nothing like an actual script and stuff like that. So I was like freaking out. Okay, what do I do? She's like, "Oh, I'm gonna give you a director." So she gave me a director, and then um, I had people that were part of the project and people that um, left. Um, it never got made, sadly, Wow. because uh, the director was in and out of here in New York. Okay. So it never okay. got made. So that was the one thing that I was kind of bummed out about it. But, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, um, I moved on from that. And um, and then I, I went to other events and uh, somebody thought that I was a model. So they're like, hey, are you are you a model? I was like, no, but I. But I could be. <laughs> so, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. so like, all right, cool. Then somebody came up to me at a at a, at another event. It, it was a meetup, and she was like, "Hey, are you are you a model?" And I was like, "Yeah, I am a model." You there know, you I'm like, "Yeah, I'm a model." <laughs> so she was like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna have you on board." So then uh, we we um did a couple shows with her, and then during COVID, I I got bored. I got bored during COVID. I was still taking college classes. I I was junior year processing almost my senior year and i got really bored i was like let me take this acting thing a, a shot like what's what's the there worst thing i could i could suck at and never do it again you exactly know? <laughs> exactly so um i started to do acting and literally the ending of 2020 when everything was going back to normal almost so and and i was approaching my senior year mm -hmm. so um i got i got like i said i got really bored and on um, the first like when I took it really serious, the first project I was a part of was uh, David Makes Man. It was Oprah Winfrey's um, project that they shot a couple of years ago and they were doing season two. So um, I got brought in as background and they wanted me to be a Lyft driver. Okay. So I was like, okay, so I I was a Lyft driver and I got a chance to meet the main actor that, that was in the uh, film, which uh, not that many people can say that their first time on a big set, they get to meet the the, the lead. Exactly. So yeah. um, I was an honor to just be there, um, just seeing the crew. I've never seen a crew so big, exactly. moving stuff around. It, it takes literally eight hours a day for them just to move from that spot here <laughs> yeah yeah with all the equipment and they, on, on sets so yeah. uh it was it was pretty cool and um i was very 
observant of everything and very humble. I did not want to like say anything because there's certain things that, you know, if you say something, they're going to kick you out. So I, I just kept my mouth shut that the whole process of the project. Um, yeah. And the actor got out of his way to um, speak to me. He got, out, he got out of his way to talk to me, um, which was cool. He was like, hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. Um, nice to meet you. I was like, hi, I'm Axel. I'm your Lyft driver for today. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and we did this scene a couple of times and um, that was a cool moment. Just um, meeting him, meeting a couple of the uh, stand-ins and a couple of the camera people and just and just really l learning the whole process of it was pretty cool because i've always wanted to do like camera work and stuff like that like, oh, yeah cool. being behind the scene yeah. and, and learn uh the beauty of, of being behind the scene but let's pause here because it's very interesting what yeah. you <laughs> what you're telling us uh, but let's take the first commercial break okay and when we come back we're gonna learn more about mr axel aponte and his story here in Beeline to Passports on GKI Radio. We are back. We are back from commercial break. Great music. You're listening GKI Radio. My name is Joe Batista. I'm your host. And tonight we have a special guest. This special guest, he is a model, also an actor. His name, Mr. Axel Aponte. Axel, uh, very interesting what you're saying on, on the first segment, um, you know, you have that you were born and you decide to okay let me try let me give a shot on this then basically i was looking to do in the past uh when the people told you well this is not la mm -hmm. uh this is florida uh they have see these changes and let me tell you in the past many many years ago I'm close to the 26 years uh, living here in Central Florida. Uh, they used to have a lot of films. Yeah, I know. I, I used to work it. for Disney mm -hmm. uh, by that time. And I remember Mortal Kombat. Mm -hmm. uh, that was filmed in the Disney Studios. Nice. Uh, they used to be in GM Studios. Now it's Hollywood Studios. Uh, Universal as well. They used to have a lot of stuff. The city, the, the building, uh, the city hall uh, in, the, in Orlando, the old city hall was in this particular movie, Demolition Man. Really? What they did was a deal with the production company because they need to make that kind of real, and they decide to, okay, we take it, we're going to destroy the building for you guys, that you guys can have the new building, and they're going to be over part of the production. 
that is Demolition Man. That scenes, then you see Wesley Snipe mm -hmm. and uh, Sylvester Stallone, they basically in the building and the building, uh, you know, go down. Basically, they did the Smarter. demolition of the, <laughs> of the building uh, as a benefit for the city. Nice. That used to be Central Florida on films. Uh, today is more commercial. Yeah. Uh, they do a couple of things, but it's more the commercial side. Uh, films, we can say in Miami, in Florida, mm -hmm. they they basically uh, get busy. Uh, bad Boys. Yeah, I'm shot there. Uh, they have a couple TV series, and they have a couple TV series. Then they have, uh, I've been blessed to participate on, on that TV series, also filmed in the Miami area. Tampa, all the lifetimes, um, yeah. you know, Hallmark. Hallmark. Mm -hmm. They must do the, the Chuck Week. All that is done in the, in the Tampa, Tampa area. area in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, but having that opportunity, uh, then you start the industry, meeting people, you know, and we love uh, our people from OIF, you know, mm -hmm. and I always talk about OIF here and Lenny Omi to be here <laughs> in the show. I've uh, been always talking to, to him to come to the show and uh, give the information about OIF and what the organization independent filmmakers, uh, that's the new name of OIF, uh, you know, expand already to Tampa, looking to expand to other cities around the nation. But meeting that people that day on that event basically changed your life. Yeah, it did. Really because <laughs> you were bored, basically, you were yeah. bored, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you decide, okay, uh, let me give a chance. And now you have been done several projects, mm -hmm. several films mm -hmm. included, and we're going to talk about this very in, in the next uh segment. Uh, then you have been nominated, yeah, for awards. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's awesome, yeah, thank you, thank you. That's awesome, you know, having that opportunity. Uh, to something that you give a shot. You basically uh, didn't know the future. Yeah. And you've been now active mm -hmm. in, in this in industry, the film industry. Um, the story about, you know, in something that goes parallel with what you've said to meet people on set and people, you know, very well-known people. I have a, an experience uh, here in Orlando, my first, like you, my first film was a student film. Then I have the opportunity to uh, have a, an audition. I did my audition. I went to work as a background mm -hmm. on this film. They, they're still working on it, you know, uh, Budget-wise, you know, was millions of dollars, and I met a couple people. And when I get there, I didn't know who was the lead, mm -hmm. Mr. Kevin Sorbo. Oh, nice! You know, I met Hercules. Himself. Hercules, yes. <laughs> I met uh, Kevin Sorbo on that uh, that night when I met him uh, and gave the opportunity to start working with him and the director. So something on me, then he pulled me on the side. I said, uh, I need you to learn these lines because we want you to have an interaction and conversation with Kevin Sorber. Like, yes, that's <laughs> an opportunity. All right. Original was to go only one day to do the, the film. And I ended to uh, participate three days on the road on that film. Nice. Again, being humble, being quiet, mm -hmm. and being like a sponge, absorbing mm -hmm. details, absorbing information that basically transform your career. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. And I see that I have something similar 
uh, with your career, Danny. Uh, you've been humble, you've been learning, and you've been basically having the opportunity to be in films mm -hmm. on the major leagues. I yeah. always call major yeah. leagues when it, when you go and hey, you need to show to this, and the project is uh, by Warner Brothers or by Fox or by mm -hmm. one of those. Like it's in major leagues. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you go there and they have trailers and trucks and um, you know the best part of everything is they have a chef there cooking. Yeah, the catering is great. <laughs> they have the catering, the catering and they feed you in the morning, they feed you in the afternoon, great food. That is, uh, you know, it's amazing. It's mm -hmm. amazing when you start working in a project and that project basically transform your career. Mm -hmm. Saying that um, you said, have this opportunity, be a Lyft driver, uh, meet these people, from that point, you feel then your world in the entertainment world change? Um, yes, due to the fact that um, a lot of those people that you meet on set, you get to work again. Yes. Um, depending on how the way you approach. Correct. Um, and how you want to be approached as well. Um, I do not have an ego. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's why people want to work with me again is because I'm very um, focused and um, I am focused on the scene and um, I want to collaborate with as many people as I can also um, help them as well. Like if they need help with like equipment and stuff, I've, I've um, done that before where I've been in projects and mm -hmm. They need help with like you know just helping out with the lights or um with the camera and stuff like that so i've got opportunities with people that i've worked with before perfect they've used that's me great again. there's people that i've worked with five six times already in the past uh mm -hmm. year and it's it's great because you have that familiar that familiar familiarity of just being on set with them and knowing how they are yes in person and then how they want their film to be as well. That's correct. That's correct. So. Yeah, and, and definitely it is an opportunity when I always said an opportunity just comes once. Yeah. It's like uh, a, the boomerang. You mm -hmm. throw the boomerang, and the boomerang goes, hit, and come back to you. But sometimes it's like an arrow. Mm -hmm. You throw the arrow, the arrow doesn't come back. Yeah. If you don't take that opportunity, you reject yeah. later, like, wow, I didn't take this opportunity. Uh, and you never know. Yeah. Each opportunity has their challenge, but also they have the gift. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes that opens many other doors yeah. for you, for your career, and continue with uh, your career. Mm -hmm. Let's take another short commercial break. And people, remember to drop a comment or question if you would like to hear them here in the show. The number is 407-476-9059. Again, 407-476-9059. Remember to say my name, Joe Batista, following by your name and your comment or question. And you could also hear here in b to Passports on GKI Radio.
We are back. We are back from commercial break. Great music. You're listening to GKI Radio. My name is Joe Batista. I'm your host. And remember, then, B-Line to Passports is every Monday at 8 p.m. here in your station. And tonight, we have a special guest. He is Axel Aponte, a model and actor. And Axel... I want to ask you how we met, because I remember seeing you in, in different events, but I remember uh, then, you know, we start talking and we have uh, friends in common. Mm -hmm. And most uh, the events that we participate has been with the OIF. Mm -hmm. That's that, how, how we met. So I met you at the end of the year OIF awards from me back in 2023. Awesome. So that's how um we met and i think i i think i approached you i think right i think i i, I went out of my way to like say hi to you and yeah hey, you know you? i have a couple uh, on a table with a couple friends and mm -hmm. we were taking some pictures mm -hmm. and you knew some people uh, that were with me uh mm -hmm. like sky bellonomi yeah mm -hmm. um also uh there was other people right there and then we start uh you know talking and hey here on the yeah. show <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh that is what we talk about network you know when you go to events and most in this industry you need to network mm -hmm. uh, because being in the industry for many years uh in different uh areas you if you don't network you never know what is the next project for people yeah or what gonna be your next assignment mm -hmm. uh and saying that i need to say that mr axel aponte he is one of the new cast for la gran alondra 2. uh he's basically involved on this project since basically two days ago yeah <laughs> <laughs> couple couple of days ago um then uh, we we talk about um something that is happening in his life right now and we're going to talk about that right now uh and then i approach him and say hey do you want to participate on this tv series and he say yes and he's involved in La Gran Alondra 2. Uh, and what is, what happening in his life is then Mr. Axel Aponte, he is nominated for an award in the OIF Most Recent Challenge, which uh, is your nomination. Um, so I got nominated for Best Supporting Actor for a film called Delhi Swipe. Awesome. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, in that film, I play a detective. So I play uh, Detective Montes, which is similar to someone that we know, Jonathan Montes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so um, technically, <laughs> uh, I'm playing him, but not really. Okay. Like, I try to look like him in the film uh, <laughs> with the with the like goatee and stuff like that. But it was a huge honor just playing some, something different. Awesome. Uh, I've played a cop before but just background. I've never played a, an actual cop. So it was a challenge for me to play a detective. I never played a detective. So it was just um, putting my foot in the door of playing a um, detective, um, which is something that I never thought I could play. So I wanted to try it out. And uh, that's just something that I always want to do is whatever role I take, I want something different. Mm -hmm. um, a so, challenge yeah a challenge that's that's literally what i want and mm -hmm. pretty much all the roles that i want is um something that's mysterious about that character or something that is um tough it could be dialogue it could be the the uh, physical physicality of it yes and um stunts as well i've done a couple projects with um with um kareem iverson yes um, yes and i've done my own stunts with him and it's 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 been a blast. I just recently shot uh, Night Shift last week, and that was a uh, uh, th there was some physicality there that um, me me and him had to do a fight scene as well as I had to uh, abuse a woman in the film. Wow! So my wow. my um, character is um, an abuser, and um, 
I do not, I, that's not what I do in real life. No, I don't exactly. Use anybody, exactly. But, um, We're actors. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was a challenge because yes. I've never hit a woman. I've never, um, you know, done that. Um, but it was, it was a challenge. Oh, wow. How, how can we make this look real? Correct. And, Correct. um, I, I, I looked bigger too. I gained like five pounds for it and, um, it, it looks really good. I can't wait for it to come out. The uh, camera work looks amazing. And I hope that he puts it in um, other film festivals with that project. Very nice. And next so. week, he's going to be here. He's going to be. Oh, he is? Oh, yes. Nice. Karim, next week, <laughs> he's going to be in our show. He's going to be talking about uh, his projects as well. He has been in the show um, before. Now he's coming back to talk about the projects. Nice. Yes, nice. very nice, very nice. Um, very interesting, uh, you know, all the process again, you know, network, networking, give you some opportunities. You know, now you're going to have a challenge because in La Gran Alondra is in Spanish. Yeah. Because in the Central Florida area, we didn't have any opportunity in Spanish. We basically, we making that opportunities in Spanish for great actors, you know, bilingual actors, they're coming on board and we know that this is gonna be an amazing and fantastic uh, opportunity uh, and will open doors for many, many, many others uh, for the future. But most definitely, uh, this is gonna be then your next challenge. It's gonna be <laughs> in, in Spanish speaking, your, yeah. yeah born born language let's say yeah, that way yeah, because, it was. Uh, uh, and you move to the u.s and you learn yeah. the english mm -hmm. and all these things but your born language from puerto rico you know mm -hmm. uh, spanish uh it is going to be your next challenge and, yeah. and we're glad that you took this opportunity you know having you on board they're going to be so amazing yeah. so amazing most yeah, i have um other projects too um i have a film uh, filming next month called Doll of Deceit. Okay. With yes. um, Amanda Jensen. Yes. So that's her project. Um, I have a small little part there. Um, Sky as well. I have one called The Club. I think we're filming that next year. Um, I had a small part. I, I was also nominated for Best Actor earlier this year for one of her films called Coming Out. Okay. Yes. So, I remember um, that. I got I got nominated for Best Actor for that one. Didn't win, but it was, it was a huge honor. Great. Uh, not that many people can say that. And you were nominated. nominated. Yeah. You have two nominations in one year. Yeah. yeah. And not that many people can say that. No. So, uh, so definitely. It's, it's it's very humbling. Uh just looking at it from the outside in that I didn't think I would be this far. You know, I feel like when I took this approach acting, I feel like it was gonna take me like 10 years to really, you know, get oh, myself man. out there. And it's um and it's going quick, like it's going like uh, I feel like sometimes my body is going faster than my brain. <laughs> <laughs> you know how's that? So, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I always say in this industry, you need to be prepared uh, in three areas. You know, physical, mentally, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because physically, you know, being on set all these long hours, um, the the eating is not that healthy. <laughs> yeah. uh, we try, we try, you know, we're production to bring some healthy food. Um, <laughs> you know, I have a good friend of mine and helped me uh, to came to came down to this weight that I have. Uh, and he's one of the sponsors of this show, uh, Old Testy Testing Solution, uh, Freddy. And let me tell you, being eating healthy helps a lot because you spend eight hours, 10 hours, 16 hours sometimes on set and you need to, uh, you know, eat uh, healthy. The other is uh, emotional. Mm -hmm. No, your emotions, you need to work with your emotions because this one is not that easy. This industry is not that easy. Uh, you get rejected often. Yeah. And most when you start submitting, you submit, 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 and you don't get the role and mm -hmm. you feel then that was your role, yeah. you can be emotional uh, distracted, <coughs> all right? And uh, psychological, physical, mentally, that mentally part, then you need to be focused 
on your projects and your goals. Yeah. Uh, they're going to have a lot of distractions, but just yeah. focus on what you want just to continue your path and you know, continue getting more nominations and yeah. awards. <laughs> right. That's, that's, that's the goal. You know, um, I know that when I first started acting, um, I didn't uh, do well. Um, there's a couple of projects that, you know, weren't that great. And then there was also projects that I wanted to be a part of that I got rejected and, mm -hmm. um, and it messes with your mind a little bit. Cause you think I wanted too much, man, what, what I'm could, could have I done different. Yes. And sometimes you need to come to the realization that there's nothing you didn't wrong. No. You probably just didn't look the part. Exactly. And, um, now since I have been this in this industry for now, almost four years, um, I know that whatever audition I do, if, sometimes I've done the best auditions that I've never gotten picked. Exactly. So I'm like, that's probably the best audition I've ever done, and I've never got chosen for it. And it's probably not me, and they probably saw somebody that looked more of the part. It's basically the uh, perspective of the director, yeah. what they want, that mm -hmm. what they want for that character for their film. Yeah. That mm -hmm. That is... Yeah, definitely, definitely. But let's take another short commercial break. And people, thank you for being with us, learning about Axel Aponte story. And we'll be right back with more of Be Line to Passports on GKI Radio. We are back. We are back from commercial break. Great music. You're listening to GKI Radio. My name is Joe Batista. I'm your host. And tonight we have this special guest. He is a model, actor. Also, he is a new cast of La Gran Alondra 2. His name, Mr. Axel Aponte. Axel, uh, we talk about... Where are you from? What you did? Everything that you has been working and network, 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 mm -hmm. open the doors to OIF, OIF, also other projects in on major leagues <laughs> uh, that I always call anything that is done for Netflix or Prime or Paramount. You never know. Yeah. Um, I always call it major leagues. Then have all new projects that are coming up involved now with La Gran Alondra 2. We want to have your social media. We want to have your INDV. And also, we want to know your future project, what you want to achieve. Okay, so first off, I'll talk about my social media. Um, so Facebook is Axel Ponce. Um, nothing big there <laughs> um, my instagram is x x models and then my imbd is axel aponte um literally i'm the first one that pops up and if you click on it i have uh I think now i have 32 credits now awesome man IMBD. awesome awesome so <laughs> i have that very nice and then when it comes to the future projects um uh la gran garana which which you just announced earlier i'll be doing that um uh, Koroba Kai is coming out, so I'm That's in a right. small little uh, background in there. Awesome. Uh, I think it's in the last part of it. That the la well, I think it's the second part, the third part. I don't know which part it is. Yeah. I know I'm, I'm, I'm in there somewhere, and I've had a couple um, family friends that they were like, hey, like, aren't, aren't, where, where, where are you? And I'm like, it hasn't come out yet. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. Not uh, yet. Not yet. Yeah. And um, that, that was a lot of fun. I had a that's probably the best time I've been on set was being on that project, meeting 
a lot of the cast members. I was just an honor um, being there and a, a dream come true. Yes. Dream come true. I grew up watching the Karate Kid and um, it was so cool just seeing Ralph there. And like, <laughs> I really didn't say, well, I was like, I remember walking by and I was like, oh, bro, hi. And I just walked away <laughs> from the moment. Um, and then um, William Zabga came out of his way to talk to me and Susan. So Susan was with me in the project as well. Very good. Um, and I realized that um, when you're in those big projects, if you have good chemistry with the other person, they're going to use you a lot more. Yeah. So um, me and Susan were there and um, me and Susan have been in, God knows how many projects. And I think the I think it was the first or second AD saw that, that me and her Very have good. a chemistry there. Mm -hmm. And he uses again for another scene that day for the party scene. Very good. Um, and not only that, they use this a lot more within that scene as well. They moved us around for certain shots. And I guess the reason why, and and, and I was I, I was thinking about it that day when me and her were on set. I was like, I think I know why they're using us a lot. Mm -hmm. They see the chemistry that me and you have because we've been on like twenty projects. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. She was like, "Oh yeah, you um, you um, might be right." I'm like, "Yeah, that's probably it." Because you look at the other people that haven't used them as much as me and you. Yeah, is it Susan Chavez was I mean, last week here. In, yeah, in the yeah, show. I saw, yes. I saw the uh, the um, um the um, interview. So, um, congrats to her. Uh, be seeing her most likely tomorrow at the OIF premiere. That's right. A little catching up to do <laughs> with her <laughs> and everything. So yeah, um, another project that I hope we finally start is called uh, Magic and Models. Okay. So in that project, I play a, a French chef. So I have a French accent in the. There you go. There. there you go. Um, so um, it's a TV series that they're planning to do. Um, it's been literally three years in the making. I just hope that we finally get to start either sometime next year to actually shoot it and stuff like that. And then I have a premiere coming out at the end of this month called uh, Pickleballers. Um, I have a small part in that film with the with the main actress. Um, I currently do not remember her name, <laughs> but I know that um, that she's the main uh, lead in the film, and I have a little small role in there. I I have a I I I have a fake fake accent in that film. So I okay. do have a fake accent. So, so that's the pre-character of what I'll be playing in the TV series in the future. And then in the beginning of October, I have uh, another film that will be premiering, which is Kareem's film, Guard, Guard My Heart. Guard I my have heart. a small little part in that film. So I'll be in Tampa for that and celebrating that project. So um, just a lot of premieres coming up this month. And I have a small little part uh, coming on October. Um, I am planning to audition for two features um, that are, excuse me, uh, either coming out in November or in January. Very nice. So, Very yeah. nice. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. And Axel, thank you for accepting the invitation and thank you for sharing all your story. And very nice, you know, we are Puerto Ricans mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, being a, a Puerto Rican in this uh, beautiful big land of the uh, United States and start opening doors mm -hmm. uh, for many other people that are coming behind us uh, doing this acting world or the entertainment world. Uh, it is is something then you feel so nice, so humble, uh, because is you seeing you're gonna open some doors, then you basically people close it for you before, or people um, didn't saw that you have the talent to do it. Uh, in, in my particular case, and I've been you know working so hard uh, on this for over 35 years uh, in different areas of the entertainment industry. And now we having this opportunity to uh, co-produce a Spanish speaker TV series and many others uh, series we did already for a short film in Spanish. Now we move into uh, this TV series and we have many others 
they're going to be in Spanish as well for the uh, Spanish speakers community. Uh, because in the Central Florida, we have so many Hispanics, yeah. but no projects for the Hispanics. And that's why we've been, uh, you know, try to uh, break the walls and, and, yeah. and open doors to mm -hmm. all the Hispanics and having these opportunities for the Hispanics. Again, Axel, has been a pleasure. Like I always said, break a leg. <laughs> and I will see you on set um, because uh, this week we start the La Gran Alondra dos filming yeah. and this is going to be so amazing some fantastic very fan fantastic cast the crew amazing crew and not only that part then it has been a bless then when they call us to be part of the producers and also involved on these projects yeah. again thank you and we'll see you very soon in hollywood yeah well we'll see um uh if it does go there like i said i i, I have no control over that correct Only god has so if he wants me to be on that stage um he'll do it um i've realized that um as you you know are in this industry you can't control a lot of things that's so, right um and and in, in my personal life as well, um, uh, I don't worry too much about it because that's not what I should be focused on is being famous or, um, um, but I do want to make an impact and a positive impact. So that's, um, that's great. I hope that God allows me to do that. Awesome. Um, I hope there's bigger things within the, you know, within that market, you know, Hollywood as well as the Atlanta market. Um, I do want to move. So one of those places mm -hmm. so that I could do this full time. That's that's one of my goals is to do this full time and um, as well as get to the community as well, uh, especially the Hispanic community for like children and stuff like that. And I would like to do some make a wish foundations as well that um, families that have kids that are like, you know, that have cancer or just any type of disabilities that, you know, they're they'll, you know, won't be with us for you know so long or 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 that that they're just fighting battles that they can't fight so that's just something that i've always that's always been in my heart that's that's go. that's amazing that's amazing and thank you for sharing that uh information as well again thank you for being uh with us here sharing all your information having all these uh, projects in that you are involved and the ones in the coming on the future and Let's rock the world. And people, thank you for being with us in another Be Line to Passports. And remember, be a leader, rock the world, inspires others with your emotions in control. Good night.